Brilliant. Well, Neil, nice to have a week where you don't have to travel quite as far. You've done one end of the country, done the other, so two home games is, is quite nice. It is, yeah, and I think that was the pleasing thing about Saturday was it, it was a, a fitting moment at the end when we could go and sort of uh, celebrate with the, the travelling supporters because it had been a long few days for everybody um, involved and, and um, you know, huge credit to the players for the mentality of of going away to Portsmouth and, and putting in such a good performance but leaving slightly disappointed with the result um, but then bouncing straight back at Carlisle. So, yes, it, it was a long week. Um, Great to finish with the points and, and obviously sets us up lovely mentally in a very good place uh, going into two huge home games. Icing on the cake as well to have taken a little nibble on the on the goal difference. Almost worth, well potentially by the end of the season could be worth an extra point and I'm sure something you would have been thinking about with Carlisle. Yeah, I wasn't thinking about how many goals you can score. I was thinking purely just winning the game, trying to win the game. Um, goal difference, yeah, let's hope we're not in a position uh, where we're thinking about goal difference. Um, Come, come, sort of the end of April. Um, but it, it, you know, you're right; it could, could be vital at some stage, um, whether that's sort of separating 12th and 13th, or or sort of 19th and 20th. So, um, what it does do, the goals is and the scoreline boosts confidence and belief uh, within the football club as well as the change room. So, um, yeah, re- 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 really positive. Um, and again, like I said, it just 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 boosts everybody going into not just the next sort of four days, but also the two uh, big games after that as well, away from home. Having played nine minutes against Bolton the other day, does that does that count for anything? Is it any real relevance heading into tomorrow night? I don't think so. I don't don't think, I, you know, what have I learned? Um, anything different about Bolton? No. Uh, have they learned anything different about me? Probably not. <laughs> you know, so, so does personnel come into it? No. Because, you know, we both made changes for the game and... and um, you know, so you just you take your best guess at what the opponent's going to do. Um, yeah, but it doesn't make too much difference at all. Yeah, if if anything, perhaps the the only thing you can take out of it really underlines Bolton's commitment to to what they want to do and how they go about things. In that the conditions were terrible, but they were still very much trying to to do things their way. Well, they, they, they've been a work in progress for a long time, and they have progressed. Um, and then the Ian's done a great job uh, moving them forward from from. Almost club going out of extinction to, to now trying to get into the championship and just shows what a huge football club it is. And and, and when I was asked pre Bolton two weeks ago about you know is it fair they can invest so much money into you know Collins the centre forward, I said yeah they've earned the right to be able to do that. So um, they, they've come such a long way, um, been coached um, for a long time in a style of play, and they're good at it. And you know as you should be after two, three, four years and various transfer windows. So they've earned the right to be as good as they are. Um, we, we know it's a tough challenge, um, but that's what you want. You want to be playing the best teams, and, and we're in a great place. We want to be playing good teams when we're in a good place. Let's talk about Lyle Taylor. So he's been in the door a little while now, and, and you can always, both him personally as you as a manager, can always want more. But overall, he's, he's given a lot, hasn't he, in a, a short period of time? He's, he's been excellent. He's been excellent in the building. He's been excellent uh, on the training pitch. He's been excellent on the coach, in the changing room, and on the pitch. He's been outstanding. Um, goals, assists, link-up play, competitiveness, um, communication, really good. Um, so, obviously known Lyle a long time. Um, when he first came to Mill, when he was a slightly different player to today, where um, more athletic and channel runner. But he's had to adapt his game as we all do when we get older. And he has he's adapted his game really well. And you can just now see just people adapting their game to play with him. Um, combinations is always a key. And that's not just always about you know uh, two centre forwards or a wide player and a full back or two centre halves. You know, combinations between goalkeeper and centre forward, for example. You know, um, so you know, there's, there's, lot, there's lots to come together. So when we're talking about Bolton being a work in progress over the last two, three, four years now, you know, we're talking about eight weeks, <laughs> nine weeks of work in progress. So it, it does take time, um, but in, Lyle was done outstandingly well. Yeah, a couple of those goals on Saturday, a good example of of team understanding and building that. You think of the opening goal, the touch that he takes, crucial to opening the, the play up, and, and that doesn't happen overnight, but it's it's happened quite quickly. It, it has, and you know, we'll have to be mindful, with, with, not just with Lyle, but, but you know, with the group as well. Um, that we've had a few weeks now, we've been quite a good place physically, um, and I have to make sure I keep us in a good place. I can't afford to lose lose anybody. Obviously, Jordan came out of the team the other day um, for nothing other than had to think about you know, freshness um, and why 
why Jordan's performance has maybe gone from sort of an eight and a half out of ten and, and just dipped off a little bit because um, he hasn't played a huge amount of football over the last eighteen months to two years. Um, so you know, it, it's my job. I have to try and keep ahead of the curve by by guessing a lot of the time um, to leave players out, put people in for the right games. Um, so you know, that's certainly a consideration with with, with an older group, um, but. Performance on Saturday was very, very good, and that was individually as well as collectively. Presumably, that sort of intuition as a manager does it build up over over time? Something you just get a feel for after a while when a player needs to come out, you just make that judgment. Yeah, um, again, sometimes it's easier when you work with people for longer, and I think you know that's, that's why a lot of managers sign players that have played for them before um, because you know what you're going to get, what they can and can't do physically as well as tactically. Um, you rely on your staff. You know, it's about to build relationships quickly with my staff. Um, helps for me in particular, Lawrence Bloom here, sports scientist. For me, be one of the best sports scientists within within football outside the Premier League. Uh, you know, so we're very fortunate for Cambridge United to have him here. Um, but he's very good with the players, and he's very good for me. Um, I trust him, and you know, I always make the final decision on team selection. Um, but I need to rely on the opinion of my staff, and also the fiscal outputs as well. Um, so. You know, ho- hopefully, you know we we make the best judgments. And it's a fairly obvious thing to say, but for any club in this league, getting that side of things right, and there's an element of luck always as to player injuries. But as you say, if you can crack, if everyone stays fit, you've got all of those options on the bench. Just life becomes so much easier for everyone. Yeah, it does. Um, nature of football is that between November and and end of Feb, start of March. You do pick up injuries. That, that's just that's just nature. That's just pitches completely change as the weather changes. Um, you sort of get 15 to 18 games into a season, and the loads get bigger and quicker, and the demand gets quicker because at the start of the season, there's loads of football. Let's be honest, there's loads of football, there's loads of cup games at the start of the season, but everyone changes their teams nowadays for the cup, so the players get continuity and they all get minutes. When you start going to the Saturday, Tuesdays in October and November, and it's league, that's completely different. Managers tend to then pick a settled team, and that's when the injuries occur. Then over Christmas, you have so many games, etc. So, not just us, but most clubs have had their tough spell, Bolton included, with the spate of injuries. Um, and then you hope to get them fit. So, hopefully, for us, we've had our downturn, and we're staying fit now. And and on that, we're getting players closer back to the training pitch. Brilliant. That's great for me. Pleasure. When you came in there, you made a point at saying how you wanted your wide players to not only get assists but contribute goals as well. With that in mind, how pleased have you been with um, Sonny Kaikai since you came in? Obviously, goal of the weekend. I think goal against Fleetwood was it impressive against Oxford and Blackburn in performances there as well. Just how pleased have you been with him since you come in? Yeah, it, it's I want that from my wide players, but it's, it's not just I want; it's a demand. Mm. You know, you, you, it's their job. To create and score, so th- there's a lot more to a wide player in the modern game. Just, you know, just stand on the wing and wait for the ball to get you, like we, like I did when I was a kid. It was, uh, that that doesn't happen anymore. You know, they have to do so much more wide players without the ball as well as with the ball. So much tactically to it. Um, so many different systems that you can play with your wide players in it. So the demand's quite high on them. The workload's really high on them in the modern game. Uh, they tend to run them, and the fullbacks tend to run more than anybody else on the pitch. Um, so. You need freshness in them, and you need to be able to rotate as well. But you do need an outcome. You do need an output from them. And for for me, the output is is yes, it's getting you up the pitch, winning set plays, setting goals up, or scoring goals. Um, having the bravery to get in positions to do it, and that's without the ball as well as with the ball, with the ball taking people on to shoot or cross. But then when you haven't got the ball and somebody else is doing the other side, you need to get in the box. You need to be the one that's putting yourself in the position to go score a goal. Um, and that's what I'm trying to demand from from a wide player. So, um, you know, we, we, we've seen that. You know, Jack's doing it. You know, Soleil's doing it. Bro's getting there as well. He can come on the other day and had a really good Im- impact when he come on the pitch. And and, and that's that's what I want. I want, want that impact from a wide player. Pleasure, Stephen. All yours. Hi Neil. <laughs> um, you haven't picked up wins yet against the top sides, but how much confidence do you take from some of those performances, the Oxford game, Charlton game, even Portsmouth recently, that you can compete with these teams? Did you say Charlton? <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, the blowers in the table. I know what you mean by a big club, yeah, but yeah. I, I, I... Charlton, in your, sorry, no, Charlton in your first game in charge, I mean. Right, okay, yeah. Um, I'd go with. 
well, I'd say Blackpool obviously was one. We played at home, obviously top top side where we we, we beat them. Um, Ports, Port, Portsmouth take a lot. Steve take a lot of. Um, I said after some glass was half full for sure after Pompey because it was a really strong performance and so I didn't think it was a game we deserved to lose. Um, so you know I was really proud of the players in that and I thought we played really really well. Um, Oxford again was another one where for 60 minutes we, we should have been out of sight. You know we should have been two or three up in the game and, and, and cruising um, and we lose last minute. So I'd say those games we give really good account of ourselves. Bolton slightly different. Bolton probably a little bit more well. Shape-wise, similar to Blackpool in a 3-5-2. Um, however, however, Bolton a lot more dominant with the football. Um, so, you know, for us, is making sure that we can compete, as we have in the other games. We're organised, as we are have been in the other games. Um, but then also, we've carried a threat in those games as well. Uh, Portsmouth, we carried a threat and, sh and should have been three up at half-time. Uh, Oxford, we should have been out of sight, um, carried a threat. And, and, and Blackpool, obviously, we won the game, so we certainly carried a threat in that one. So it's making sure that we're really, really organised and disciplined without the ball, um, but then we carry a threat with it as well. That's the key. And on the relegation picture as well, do you look at the, you want to look at the 50-point mark as a, as a target that you might look at and say that'll be enough to stay up this season? Yeah, I, I, I look at it and say well, you have to get what you have to get. You know, whether that's 42 or 51, you you have to get that. What we don't know is what that target's going to be at the moment. So I think we most managers use 50 as a guideline. So I, I don't look that far ahead. Or I try not to anyway. Um, so I look at when we got to 30. I think I said to you guys post match after whatever game it was, the fleet we game possibly. I said, right, the next target for us is to get to 40 as quickly as we can. And once we get to 40, it'd be then to get to 50. So I'm looking now at 38 points and, and you know, from from 30 games, 31 games, from 31 games. Yeah, and I'm, I'm looking and saying, well, that's 18 points from the last 12 games. You know, we're in a lot healthier position. Let's let's get over that 40 point mark as quickly as we can and then reassess what we need from there. So it's really tough to look beyond the next four games. It's really tough to look beyond this week when you've got Bolton at home tomorrow, the top side, and then you've got the little matter of fact of the local derby against Posh on, on Saturday. So I can't look past the next five days, if I'm being honest, let alone the next 10 days. Um, so safer if I just go one game at a time. Let's try and get to 40 points as quick as we can. And how's the injury picture looking heading into this one as well? Yeah, looks like we come through unscathed on Saturday. Uh, or Having said that, a few little issues, but nothing major, um, which might affect team selection. I'll have to see over the next sort of 24 hours. Um, but other than that, um, no, 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 nothing major. Uh, Seiko Jana has been missing from the, he's not been in the match day squad on the squad list, but he's been part of the squad. Um, um, you know, he's not, he's not going to be available um, for the next few days. I'm not quite sure where that is at the moment. Um, he's got to have a scan. Um, but other than that, no, we're, we're in a good place. Have you got any idea what that injury is to Seiku? Well, it's, it's a knee at the moment, but it's not ligament damage. Um, so you know we're not we're not we're not banking on anything serious. Um, but he just got a, a, a Clyde in training, just uh, foot on foot. Um, so we just wanted he opened his knee, but we, we, we're not sure. But he's, he's walking around today, so it'll just be it'll just be scanning it just just to rule anything major out. Just one, you were talking earlier about team selection. Just one I thought about from Saturday that I wanted to ask you about. You, you opted to stick with James Givens rather than bringing Liam Bennett back into the team. Well, I just wondered what your thought process was behind that. Was that down to countering specific threat from Carlisle or, or how well he played against Portsmouth, Portsmouth on Tuesday? Uh, probably a little bit of both. I thought we'd done really well against Portsmouth, uh, Gibbo did. Um, you know, we have to remember he's not played a lot of football over the last few months. Um, I thought he'd done really, really well against Portsmouth. I um, thought he really helped uh, the shape of the team, and, and and his communication is excellent behind the ball. Um, and I just thought, with the nature of the game, um, wanted probably strong leadership in the change room um, and a real desire. And you know, Gibbo just a bit more experienced than Benno. But what I will say is, Liam Bennett has been outstanding for me, but also the football club as well over a period of time. He's a very, very young man. He's played a hell of a lot of football, and there's probably been times, even even while I've been in charge, even before the Portsmouth game, where he's probably needed to step out for a game or two. Um, he plays full throttle. He plays 100 miles an hour, as you know. Um, he doesn't shirk anything. 
takes responsibility. Um, and it's, it's hard for a young man to do that for an eight to 10 to 12 game period, let alone, let alone sort of 60 or 70 games in a quick short space of time. So it's important that we manage young players correctly and Liam certainly is one that will benefit from having somebody alongside him to help him out.